John Fedger here with mobilehomeinvesting.net and in my past videos, uh, publicly and not so publicly, I have been a little bit anti-age restricted or senior mobile home park, at least when you're getting started investing in individual mobile homes uh, inside of parks on private land. If you're going to be inside of mobile home parks, investing in the mobile homes one, two at a time, I would encourage you to still not get started with mobile homes inside of age restricted communities. My attitude has changed. Changed. I've warmed up to them because they are profitable. People do want to be there. People want to live in these homes, but they're typically not the path of least resistance when we're getting started in mobile homes uh, as investments. But again, I do want to make this video to let you know that you know the past videos and just moving forward, uh, mobile homes in senior parks can be quite profitable from firsthand experience and a lot of secondhand experience as well. Uh, but when it comes to mobile homes in age-restricted communities, you have to be over 40 years old, you have to be over 50, over 55, over 65 in order to live there. Sometimes the, uh, the, the park has a rule where uh, not everyone in the home has to be over 55, just one person and everyone else can be under 55, but they have to be over 18 years old. Or sometimes mobile home parks have like an 80-20 or a 10-90 kind of rule where 90% of the park has to be a certain age age and 10% of the park can be under that age. And so the, the park manager can tell you from park to park, yes, we're 55 plus, but we can allow, you know, one or two families to come in, uh, no one under the age of 18, but they vary across the country. They vary. And one of the first things that I want to mention is that when it comes to mobile home parks themselves that are, that are age restricted, um, they're all over the country. Uh, so in your local area, there may be a small amount of uh, uh, age-restricted or senior citizen type of parks, um, or there may be very few mobile home parks that are, that are age-restricted. They may all cater towards families. Uh, but in every area, there are typically in every state, there are some age-restricted parks. And I don't want you to just, you know, turn your noses up or just drive away. I don't want to sabotage your business to say, don't go through these parks. Again, I don't think that we should be going there first, but in this video, I want to talk to you about sort of things that I've learned and seen over the past 18 years. So I do I have a link to a video in the description where, which shows you where to find the local mobile home parks near you. And in that system, you can then differentiate between you want age restricted parks uh, or, or family parks. When I say age restricted, it's another word for senior parks, but also you'll come across where you have to be 40 years or older to live there. Clearly that's not seniors, but that is age restricted. Um, and it limits how many people we can sell to. You can't sell to people with families. You can't sell to people with kids. You can't sell to people that are you know, under 40 years old or under 50 years old many, many of the time. But I am glad to say that around the country, uh, you do probably have some access within driving distance to age-restricted communities in and around your area. Now, for multiple reasons, there may be less investors working in local and not so local uh, age restricted mobile home parks. So less investors means potentially more opportunities for the investors that do want to work there. Mobile home park owners and mobile home park managers that are age restricted types of communities, they are investor friendly, absolutely. Just like the regular family type of mobile home parks, some of these communities, they wanna do all their own work, some of them wanna do none of their own work, and some of them want to do only some of the work. And they definitely, um, I don't wanna say definitely, but many of the times, if you can approach a mobile home park manager, whether it's family park or an age restricted park, if you're coming across humble, sincere, you know what you're talking about, you're there to help and be an asset to the community. And again, you know what you're talking about, um, most park managers, even with even in senior citizen communities, they are friendly to work with investors. Now, if you're under the age of 55, like I am, even if you have all the needed gray hairs, um, uh, about 50% of park managers around the country will say, I'm sorry, because you're under 55, we just can't let you in. However, you can typically, I won't say typically, you can sometimes have a co-signer. I would say it's 50-50 where the park will just let you in if you're under the age of the appropriate age. They say, don't you live in the park, but if you're going to buy it and resell it, we understand make sure you sell it to an age appropriate person but other times if the park says no we we need a we need a 
we need somebody that's over 55, you can get somebody that's in your business, a partner, a friend, a straw person, a, a parent or a relative that's over 55 that can be that person that's your partner. And now they're the ones on the lease. They're the ones that have gotten approved. You're going to buy the home. You're going to clean it up. You're going to resell it. Um, so again, investing in these parks, once you find them locally, um, many of the times, even though, even if you're underage, um, mobile home parks, uh, senior parks will still be something that we can work inside if we, if we choose to. Depending on where you are around the country, you may notice certain things with regards to your uh, local age restricted or senior citizen type of retirement community. And that is that during some times of the year, they may be busier than in other times of the year. And this is normal during the winter months, uh, retirement folks, retirees, baby boomers, uh, people that don't need to work or want to get to the warmer states, they'll leave the colder states during the colder months, and then they'll flock back up to the nice, you know, to the northern states when it's beautiful uh, during the summer and the spring and parts of the fall, and then they'll come back south. So you, you have this cycle of um, mobile home parks that are empty certain times of the year, and then they're full other times of the year, and other times they're empty and then they're full. People are just kind of moving back and forth. Now, there are parks that are seasonal, and I want to bring that up. That's not necessarily what we're talking about, but a seasonal mobile home park, they're officially open let's say six months out of the year, and they're closed another six months out of the year, meaning nobody can be in that park for that six months. The homes stay there and there's still security, but it's only there because it's in a very tourist area or it's in an area where it gets ridiculously cold certain points of the year, or they just know that very few people want to be here you know, certain months, so it's just seasonal. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in this point right now, the natural ebb and flow of, um, of, of seniors, of retirement folks uh, going from the northern states to the southern states, or maybe even just from southern state to a different southern state, different times of the year. Uh, and what that means for you is that when these homes are unoccupied, uh, there's a lot less demand. People, you can, you can set your clock to it almost that, okay, I know in right after Christmas, there's going to be a bunch of people coming down to my state, uh, or I know right after March, there's going to be a bunch of people leaving my state, uh, or a bunch of people before October coming down and coming into my state, or not even my state, just my, just my area. And this isn't something that you need to know right away. If you're saying, John, how do I know this? Don't worry about this right away. This video is just to let you know that senior parks should be on your radar. It doesn't mean that we have to attack them uh, and buy five things in a senior park right away, but I do want you to be aware that what you are seeing, if you're just getting started, what you're seeing now in an age-restricted park is gonna be different than what you see in six months. Uh, it'll probably be the same in like a year from now, because again, that sort of rotation of people, that, that ebb and flow, um, but then again, it varies people from Canada, the dollar could be stronger, the Canadian dollar could be weaker, and that causes different things for more people to want to sell or buy. So in senior parks, um, it's interesting because we're not always dealing with people where it's their, their primary residence. In a family park, we are typically dealing with folks that have a primary residence and that's it. In senior parks, these could be people's second or third homes, uh, which is important to remember. This might not be your first thought, but if there are five senior citizen parks or just age restricted parks like right next to each other, there's going to be sort of, of a hierarchy. In one of those parks, people are going to want to be more than the other parks. And then there's other, another desirable park. And then there's a park where people kind of don't want to be. When, when it comes to senior citizen or age restricted parks, just like with family parks, there's a hierarchy. People that with, with cash, there are only so many buyers, senior citizens, or people with cash, $10,000, $20,000, $40,000, or that even want to put that down or make payments uh, and put down a good bit of money and then make you make you payments. If you have a mobile home in one park, it may go a lot quicker than in a different park. So parks side by side, they can have different um, attractiveness levels. Obviously, that's obvious for me, but it might not be obvious for you know everybody listening. But just be aware. Just because you find a mobile home in a park, you know that's that's a lot cheaper than a mobile home in a different park very close by. Just because you're buying that home for a lot cheaper doesn't mean it's a lot of a better. Uh, you 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 can sell it for the same price. It's a, it's a, it's a great deal. So just be aware that 
you know, senior park to senior park, it's not apples and apples. The parks vary, the locations vary, the demand varies, the lot rents vary. Even if they're right next to each other, the demand can absolutely vary. And that can let you, uh, that can give you a holding time of anywhere from like, well, three weeks if people really want it, to like three months or six months. If people don't want it, it's the wrong time of the year. It can be difficult to sell. So you really need to know uh, park to park when it comes to age restricted com communities. When it comes to sellers, like I've already mentioned, during the time of the year, uh, there may be more sellers, there may be less sellers. Uh, if they just got done living in the home and they're going back to the northern states or to the southern states, they may, uh, or they're going back home uh, and they don't wanna be there, they're not gonna come back the next year, they're gonna sell. So you'll see a lot more homes for sale towards the end of a season. Uh, after people sort of leave and they go back home, then you'll see a bunch of mobile homes on the market. Uh, if you are in a senior park or you, you like have inventory that you're trying to sell, uh, selling that when, when the seniors are coming to your area, you know, knowing when that time is and being ready for seniors, priced accordingly, marketed accordingly, um, that'll help you sell. Obviously, there's some times of the year where there are more sellers and then there are times of the years when there are less sellers. Sadly, there is a continuous supply of these mobile homes. Uh, unfortunately, we are all going to uh, pass away and uh, these homes come available. Uh, people, um, they leave, they go to assisted living, they go to hospice, they go to nursing homes, or simply they, they, people uh, pass away. And, um, and so there is a, a supply of these homes. I suppose that's the same with family parks through one reason or another, but there is in senior parks sort of these, this, um, you know, dark reason because people pass away that there are, is a constant sort of um, supply of mobile homes that are on the market. I will say that mobile home uh, sellers, uh, senior mobile home sellers, uh, for the most part, not even for the most part, but I guess compared to family mobile home owners, if we have family mobile home owners and senior mobile home owners, a higher percentage of senior mobile home owners are willing to take payments. Now, you will get that cliche seller that is, of course, going to say, I'm too old to take payments. I'm not even going to be around for that long. And that's perfectly acceptable. Of course, you're going to get that. But between family sellers and mobile uh, senior sellers, um, there is going to be a stronger number, a higher number of people that will take payments, be willing to take payments that are senior citizens. Um, now, I will say that that doesn't, that's not the same if something happens to the to the person and then their their children get the home and the children they don't want the mobile home they don't know what to do with it they've never lived in it or it has bad you know it's associated with their with their with their parents and you know it's not a good feeling so they want to get rid of it they don't want to take payments they want cash so if the if the, the homeowner still has it uh, there may be a, a chance that you can uh, purchase that on payments if the children have it um, of, of the senior, of the parent, then they will probably want to sell uh, for cash. <laughs> Seniors are awesome. Um, I don't believe, uh, no, this is definitely a fact that um, in senior parks and age-restricted parks, I've spent more time per appointment. Uh, and that's because people are down to earth. They're real. They invite you in, which is normal because you're looking at the home, but they, they give you tea. They give you lemonade. Um, folks that are a little bit older, they want to talk to you. They want to, they're not as quick to say, okay, here's what I got, you know, and now move. I got more things to do. They want to sit down with you. They want to talk with you. They want to build some trust, which is a very good thing. Uh, especially if you're going to be making a seller payments, um, you want to build that trust. Sellers don't want to take payments from you if you're just in and out, you're too busy, you're too business, you don't show people you know, common respect, you're buying somebody's home after all. Um, and they're supposed to tell you, you know, a lot of pertinent, detailed information and sometimes personal information. As investors, we're trying to be detectives and hunt down a, there's a lot of different offers that I can make a seller and I'm trying to hunt down a lot of information so I can give you multiple different offers when I'm an investor and I'm talking to a seller. So sellers aren't going to divulge things if you're just, well, they might, but you just got to, if you're just too business, you have to sit down, you have to talk, you have to get, no one, get to know one another. Many appointments, you're there 30 minutes or so, 20 minutes. Other appointments, you'll be there for two, for two hours. Uh, and the time went by relatively quickly. It was a great conversation, or maybe it did drag by, but um, really awesome people in, uh, in, in age-restricted parks. Now, when it comes to buyers, uh, this I've said two other times in different ways. Different times of the year, there are going to be different buyers, and then other times of the year, there are going to be 
uh, not just different buyers, but just a higher percentage, a higher number of buyers. Uh, and then other times of the year, there might be, you know, there's sort of always times when people will buy for cat or for, for payments. Um, and then there's more times around the year that are advantageous for selling if, if you definitely want to sell to an all cash buyer. Uh, but selling for payments, you can do that um, around the uh, around most times around the, cal the calendar. Now, less buyers also typically equals more days on the market for a seller. Uh, if there's less buyers, there's typically more days on the market that the seller is trying to sell. Some sellers have plenty of time to sell. Some people don't have plenty of time to sell. And that leads to more motivated sellers typically uh, inside of senior parks, especially when it's not the right time of the year and there's not a lot of cash buyers. Even if it is the right time of the year and there's not a lot of cash buyers, that can lead to motivated sellers uh, with higher days on the market, lower asking prices. Senior citizens are great. Um, I don't know the person watching my voice. You may be a part of the, that wonderful generation of baby boomers. Um, you may be quite the opposite um, or older or younger uh, and people are people. And I will say that when it comes to senior citizens or maybe folks you know, over 50, over 60, over 70, um, there are people that would work just night and day around me doing repairs and know way more than I do and would outwork me just like crazy. But I will say for a generalization, um, senior citizens that are moving into a mobile home park, uh, into a senior park, uh, for the most part, they want to typically do less repairs uh, than somebody moving into a family park. Now, again, you can absolutely sell a handyman special uh, inside of a mobile home park um, when like a senior citizen mobile home park. But for the most part, mobile home senior citizen buyers are typically gonna want the home a little bit uh, in better shape. Plus they have the money. They're, they're downsizing from a different residence, so they have the cash. You really have to know your area. Again, some parks you can command that high cash price and you should know what you wanna fix up in the property. We don't wanna over improve the property, but we wanna make it comparable to other things that have sold in that local park for the prices that we're expecting. When we're selling cash, it's not a mystery. We have to be prettier than the competitions or and, and or about 10% below the price of the competitions. Uh, and that's if we're selling a mobile home uh, for cash um, inside of a senior citizen mobile home park. On payments, it's a little bit different. When we're selling a mobile home on payments, I found, this is sort of a little bit off topic, but I found when selling a mobile home on payments, um, in a senior citizen community, uh, that the term rent to own, first of all, it's a vague term, but it doesn't work as well with seniors for to get to get seniors to call up. I feel that, and I've seen that seniors are more attracted to the verbiage of um, owner will finance or no banks needed or maybe even lease to own, but not so much rent to own. If it was on a piece of land, um, seniors would, would respond to land contract or owner will finance or no banks needed. But again, the term rent to own doesn't exactly sit well or doesn't get as many calls. Uh, you'll still get plenty of calls, but I've just seen that the terms, you know, um, no banks needed and um, owner will finance will, will typically get more senior calls coming in uh, versus the term rent to own. That's sort of on a different side uh, track, but I hope you followed along. Senior citizens typically are on fixed incomes. That's not always the case by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but typically they are fixed incomes and that's good for certain reasons because they're con they're continually getting in a certain set amount from the government, from pension, um, from the military, and or from other places. Uh, but they oftentimes can't do other work. So uh, if there is a problem, if they have to fix this and that, and they just run out of money, um, they may not always be able to pay. Um, so seniors, they are on a fixed budget sometimes, uh, and they can't make necessarily extra payments, but they do get their regular income. You will have to work with people. That's, you know, if you're going into senior parks and you think that you're gonna sell mobile homes on payments, well, you will, and you're selling for cash, you will. But when you're selling on payments, still ultra thoroughly screen your tenant buyers. Somebody that is 70 years old can be just as flaky and absent-minded as their 30-year-old counterpart. So you're still gonna, you still might have to go through evictions, although we don't want to, we wanna talk to people and work with them and try to get them out of their homes. Uh, but we still wanna be very, very thorough. Uh, I've followed my heart way too many times and I believe folks that 
oh, this person must have their act together. You know, they, they, they have this pension, they have income coming in, they're just double my age, of course they must know what's going on. And they, you know, they're, they're not gonna lie to me or be late every single month, month after month after month. And that's not always the case. So treat folks the same regardless of the age. Uh, that would be my lesson <laughs> for this one. It blows my mind whenever I hear the statistic that 10,000 uh, people are turning 65 years old a day, like 10,000 baby boomers every single day. Imagine that you're turning 65 years old and you're like, happy birthday to me. And then you think, wow, there's 10,000 other people having the same exact party, you know, going through the same exact stuff. And then, I mean, you know, people have to live somewhere. And um, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the wrap to, the, to this video. When you're talking about mobile homes and senior parks, you have to know your numbers. What people um, what buy, will buy for payments, cash, money to move in, what kind of repairs people want to have. Um, and again, you have to know what to expect, but not to expect. We're dealing with, I would say, everything in normal mobile home parks, but there's a few other variables because now the buyers are a bit more restricted. There's few of them. There's different times of the year when people want to be in these homes, but still very good people. We're going to make the buyers happy. We're going to make the sellers happy. We're going to make the park happy. And there's money to be made there in between. There's, you know, good profit from actually helping people and providing uh, real world value, not just to parks, uh, not just to the sellers, but to the buyers, getting good homes, cleaning them up and selling them on for cash and for payments. I hope that makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. If you did find value to this video, please like it. Please share it with your friends or share it somewhere uh, or don't. <laughs> or please uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I can't think of anything else. If you have any interest in uh, working together with me or emailing me, you can see some more information in the description below. I hope that this video helped. Uh, if you need to reach me at all, you can just email me any old time at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. That's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. I'll be happy to try to uh, answer questions if I can. And uh, thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.